All right, welcome into another edition of Study Ball. And today, uh, after watching the game last night between the Eagles and the Giants, uh, we're going to talk about a popular play in the NFL, popular play in the West Coast system, and it's called Hank. And so what that means is we're going to have a curl and some sort of flat control. We're going to have a curl and some sort of flat control, and then we're going to have a five-yard hook over the ball. That's what they call Hank. In the West Coast system, they teach to read it short to deep. So they teach to read this hook here, and then based off of the squeeze of the linebackers, they go to the curls, and then they go to the flat control from there. I'm not a big fan of reading it short to long. I'm a believer that you always want your quarterback's footwork to match the deepest route. You want to have the deeper routes timed up, and then you want to come back to your check down. So for me, I would read one of these sides, curl to flat, and then based off of what the defense does, I would recover into what I would consider my check down, which is the hook. But regardless of how you read it and how you teach it, the more important thing is what we're seeing defensively and which side we would work to uh, based on what the coverage look like is for the defense. So in this particular case, you're going to see they're going to go with a three deep here, which means that there's four guys covering the underneath zones in this particular look. All right, so the first thing we want to see is where are those linebackers playing? So initially, you'll notice, okay, basically uh, on the snap or even before the snap, you'll notice that we've got one, two, three, gosh, almost even the fourth guy is past the center here, but we've got at least three guys working to the strong side. So initially, that's telling me, hey, I've got one guy working both zones to the weak side. I am going backside right now, curl to swing off of that linebacker. And then if for some reason, this backer right here is able to work really hard out there, but I don't think there's any chance he takes away that curl on the backside. So I'm getting back, I'm seeing it, I'm reading that backside linebacker, and I'm getting the ball out of my hands. But you'll notice as we get closer to the snap, the Giants push over a little bit more so basically on the snap we're looking at what we would call a balance cover three so if we took where the ball is which is on the backside hash we basically have two defenders underneath to one side two defenders underneath to the other side so that's what we call a balanced cover three so as soon as i see the balance cover three i'm trying to overload the defense right that's how you beat a zone defense you overload the zone defense on the back side we've got two receivers, so they've got the ability to take away both of those receivers with the underneath, but on the front side, I've got three receivers, okay, against their two defenders. So for me, initially, right off the bat, once I see a balance cover three, I am going to the strong side. I'm going to the strong side, I'm reading this defender first, okay, and again, you might read it inside out. If you do, then you're going to switch this up a little bit and you're going to read whether this guy comes open and whether he hits it, and then outside after that. But I'm going to read this outside in, okay? So I'm going to read that defender. He can't cover both of these guys. I should have a throw over here based on where this linebacker is. But if I take my throw and it tells me to throw the curl and this guy pushes out to take away the curl, bang, I just replace uh, that with my check down right there and I'm using the space and I'm using the numbers to my advantage, okay? In this particular case, he's reading it inside out. So this guy kind of pops open here. Um, and so he takes the hook in this particular case. Me, I'm probably throwing the flat. Or if I'm over here and feel this guy can wrap around this defender, then maybe I throw the curl to that side with this guy tucked way inside. But he goes right to the hook there. All right, he completes that, picks up, right? seven, eight yards, nice little gain. Again, I like taking the 12 yards, so if I complete one of these, I've got an automatic 12 yards instead of just taking the five and seeing what I can get off of that. Okay, but that's what we call a balance cover three. All right, we're gonna come back with the same play again. So we've got curl, we've got flat, we've got hook, we've got curl, and we've got swing back here. All right, this time I want you to notice the defense, okay? As we look at the defense right here, if we split the field down where the ball is, we've got one, 
two, three defenders strong, and we've got one defender to the weak side. All right, so as we come out here, right, the last time as they shifted late, we ended up having an advantage to the strong side because we had three receivers against two defenders. This time, they've got three receivers, three defenders to the left-hand side, so now I've only got one defender to the weak side. This one defender is not going to be able to cover both of these guys. Okay, so it looks like 45 here is playing down position, but you'll notice he's going to rotate back. It's going to become a cover three. So that inside backer or that backer that's that stacked to the inside has to cover both of these guys. So I'm going to read this out the back side first. And if some way, shape or form, this backer here pushes hard and fast now to take away that curl, I'll recover to the hook on the inside. But because he's pushed strong, it's going to be nearly impossible for him to get all the way out to the numbers here. So you look at Carson Wentz, he's looking to the left-hand side for some reason, probably looking at that hook right here, and he gets back late to the curl. Now, it still works out because 45's bailing and it's soft, but notice how long the receiver is sitting there waiting for the football because he's reading inside out. I'd rather come right back, read this defender, see the push, hit this guy as soon as he turns around, and we're golden, and we've got a nice... 12 yard gain in that particular case, probably a first down here. This guy somehow is able to turn and run and push all the way out there. You see where our advantage is to the inside. But that's what we call a pushed cover three. You can call it an unbalanced cover three, but that means we've got three defenders to the strong side, only one underneath defender to the weak side as opposed to the two by two or balanced cover three that we saw on the first play but Carson does get to the right guy and they get a completion. But again, you just see, if we hit this at the top of the route, number 45 is five yards, seven yards away from him. Ball's getting on him right now. Now he's got a chance to react and gain some extra yards. Because we're a little bit late on this because we're reading inside out, you notice 45 is able to break on it and he's hitting him almost as soon as he catches the ball. And now we're limited in our run after catch. All right, one last look here. Uh, on a Hank and so again same look here curl swing hook curl flat all right so same play that we've been looking at all right once again let's see the backers let's see it's cover three let's see the backers one two three to the strong side now this backer turns and starts to work to the weak side but there's no chance for him to get from just inside the front side hash all the way out to the numbers to stop this curl. There's absolutely no chance. So no reason for me to waste my time looking at this quick one here. Get right out here, isolate that guy, and make your throw because nobody else can really get into the mix. So this is well done. Even though Carson looks a little bit to the inside, I'd rather see him work his eyes outside because if he works his eyes outside, there's a better chance of getting this guy to go wide and hit the curl behind it as long as he's on time. As I said, this guy can turn and sprint all he wants. If I'm on time with the throw, he's never getting to that curl based on his starting position in that pushed cover three. So boom, quick little hitch, balls out. And you see, he's got no chance to get there. Balls out, it's completed. Better timing here. He does work there and make the hit, but we even gain a couple extra yards after the hit. But key is seeing where these linebackers are initially, okay? We've got one, two, three strong to match our one, two, three receiver strong. Great. They can only have one week to go against our two week, okay? If it's balanced, as we saw on the first play, and they've got one, two guys to work to the weak side and take away our one, two, now we gain the advantage front side with our one, two, three receivers against one, two defender. So you may read it short to long, you may read it long to short, but either way, it's all dependent on what we're seeing from the backers, where they have the opportunity to take it away, or maybe more importantly, where we have the advantage on this particular play.